So hi, Microbe Hunter here and this here is a rotifer um, and it's a microscopic animal and it's a female. It's actually one of the smallest animals that are around and most of them are less than a millimeter in length. And I know that it's a female because uh, pretty much all rotifers are females. Uh, there are about 2000 known rotifer species worldwide and uh, only about 10% of these species are known to have males. And the question is now of course is how in the world do they reproduce if there are no males around? Well, some rotifers Rotifer species do reproduce sexually when the living conditions become bad, but one species of rotifer, um, Adineta vaga, reproduces entirely asexually. It lays unfertilized eggs and the new rotifers emerge out of them. And this is called parthenogenesis and this is actually also nothing unusual in nature. Quite a few examples in nature where organisms can grow out of unfertilized eggs. But what is unusual however is, is that this species of rotifer only reproduces this way. And this is puzzling because sexual reproduction is extremely widespread in nature because it ensures that there is enough genetic diversity in a species. Because during fertilization what happens is, is that the DNA of different individuals, the mother and the father, um, are mixed and you get offspring with unique DNA. This way every new generation is genetically different from the previous generation. This is really important uh, for the survival of the species because um, otherwise the species would not be able to adapt to a continually changing environment and there is the danger then that the species uh, becomes um, extinct. Rotifers however, they have survived for millions of years um, and uh, quite successfully even though the majority of them do not seem to reproduce sexually. So how have they done that? Now some people have uh, referred to them as, and I have to quote, an ancient asexual scandal because they should not have survived that long and as a species. Because normally organisms that only reproduce asexually become extinct uh, quite quickly. So how were rotifers um, able to survive for that long? And how were they able to pull, out, pull that off? Well, in order to find out, uh, what scientists have done is, is they have uh, done DNA studies. And they discovered DNA sequences in rotifer cells that come from plants and bacteria. In the DNA of rotifers, there are genes that actually don't belong in there. Rotifers therefore seem to somehow be able to take up foreign DNA and to incorporate that into their own DNA. While the ability to take up foreign DNA has already been observed in bacteria and it's interesting to see that evidently rotifers, which are animals, are also able to do this. Now if they are able to take up DNA from bacteria and plants then this of course begs the question if rotifers are, or have some mechanism to directly exchange DNA with it, uh, one another. And this is what scientists then call horizontal gene transfer and this is the exchange of DNA among individuals of the same generation. It would not be surprising if they could do that but the scientific results still seem to be a little bit inconclusive here. The question on whether a species is able to survive without sexual reproduction is surprisingly far reaching because sexual reproduction has been con uh, considered important for evolution to take place because it ensures genetic diversity. And in the process of natural selection, then this determines which ones of these individuals have a higher chance of surviving and this way to pass on their characteristics to the next generation. And now it seems that there are also other uh, possibilities besides sexual reproduction as well. I now want to quote the evolutionary biology, biologist Matthew Meselson from Howard University and he said and now I quote, what is the role of sexual reproduction in evolution? That's a major problem in evolution theory. Well, evidently nature has invented other ways besides sexual reproduction to ensure that there is genetic diversity in, in a species. And rotifers are a nice example of this. Well, it's enough uh, for today again. I hope uh, that this video was informative uh, for you and uh, do like and subscribe it uh, if you like the video so that you don't miss out on any future episode. A big thank you goes to my supporters, of course. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.